Hello everyone, welcome back to Uncommon Sense. This is a chance to be together and a warm welcome to those of you who are tuning in for the very first time. For those of you who are tuning in for the first time, I'd like to tell you about our program. Our program is about making your life better, calmer, peaceful, and more satisfying. We hope it's also a chance to grow by learning and listening to the wisdom as shared by our guests. With me today is someone I admire a great deal, Mary Sue Coleman. I met her hmm, maybe two or three months after she came to the University of Michigan, which was August 2002, at her dinner in Ann Arbor. And I have admired about her several things. Um, her enthusiasm, her comprehension, her energy, <laughs> and her ability to um, see things through. She is our current president of the University of Michigan. Prior to that, she was president of the University of Iowa. She has her PhD in chemistry from uh, the University of North Carolina. She has done work in Cancer Institute on immunology, immune systems, which interests me a great deal. And uh, she is also a professor of biological chemistry at the medical school at the University of Michigan and Professor of Chemistry at SLMA, which stands for something something in arts. Literature, Science, and the Arts. So the literature, SLMA, <laughs> Science, Literature, and the Arts. Well, welcome. We're very thrilled you're in Midland. You. She is in Midland to uh, better learn our community, but also have Midland better learn the University of Michigan. I was very interested in science. There's much talk about women getting interested in science, and clearly you did at a very early age. What interested, what drew you to that subject? Well, I was fortunate that I came from a family that really valued education. My father's a chemist and taught chemistry at a university. And I just gravitated to science when I was in junior high school. And I was really fortunate because I was in junior high school at a time when Sputnik was oh, launched. Yeah. And there was sort of a national obsession in the US about encouraging young people in science because yeah. the US was so worried about losing the space race. And I was offered all sorts of opportunities for summer programs, for lab work when I was in high school, science fairs. It was great fun. And uh, I really was able to follow a passion and did that all the way through college and graduate school and, and the early part of my career. And so I absolutely loved science and loved the fact that I was doing something that had relevance to human disease. What drew you then to administration? Well, you know, I was, I've often said it's kind of by accident that I came into administration because I was at the University of Kentucky and I was a faculty member in the cancer center. I was doing cancer research. Very happy. I had a lab. I had graduate students, postdoctoral fellows. My work was going well. But one day the university administration came to me and needed someone to help administer the cancer center. And so they wanted me to come help for just a few months. I thought this was going to be temporary. Right. And I wasn't sure that I wanted to do it, but agreed to help. And actually, when I got into it, I discovered that it was a very different part of life. Yes. Because I could have an impact on a bigger organization than just my lab or just my little area of research, and discovered that really I had an appetite for it. And uh, stayed much longer than I had thought, and uh, okay. in fact then left the university and started this career that ultimately ended as the university president. Hmm. Quixotic. Life is quixotic. Well, it is. is. And, and, and you know, I, I, I've often thought about that many things that happen to you in life are by yeah. accident. Right. You either take the opportunity or not. I took this, this chance because it was something that I discovered that I liked, and I'm very glad that I did. Um, I noticed in your address to the Regents mm -hmm. uh, of April of 2004, which was sent to me, that you used something that I often talk about on the program. You talked about that sometimes issues are chosen for the president, right? Yes. Sometimes the president has the option right. of concentrating on the mm -hmm. issues she mm -hmm. or he mm -hmm. prefers. Right. And I always feel that's the way it is in life. You know, you make your plan, you know, and then <laughs> <laughs> you have options Things that are happen. positive or mm -hmm. challenges that are, right. you know, more more engrossing differently. What of your scientific training did you bring was useful in your new role as an administrator? Mm -hmm. Well, I happen to believe that uh, training and education as a scientist and running a research lab 
gives you many skills that mm -hmm. you can use as, as an administrator because I had in my lab always 10 or 12 people. So I had to learn about personnel policies. I had to learn how to select people to come into the lab. I had to obtain grants, so I had to learn how to write well and to convince people that my ideas were good ones. I had to do strategic planning because if I didn't, I would never get another grant. Mm -hmm. So I needed to be very strategic about my work. Uh, I needed to learn how to run budgets because I had to budget for my laboratory and stay within the budget that we had. Um, I had to learn how to write papers, to give talks, to convince people that it was worth investing in my laboratory. So there are many skills that you learn mm -hmm. that are transferable. And I, and I also am very data driven. I like to look at evidence and mm -hmm. when I'm evaluating something I want to know, well how can we tell? whether mm -hmm. this is working. So I think that those skills are ones that have worked well for me. Mm -hmm. How, what did you find was useful in the selection of people to work in your lab? Uh, well, uh, depending on what it was that I was uh, recruiting for, mm -hmm. you know, whether it was a graduate student or whether a uh, technician, uh, I always liked people who took great responsibility for what they were doing that they understood that their work was more important than simply for themselves, that the group depended on them, and that we had different roles in the laboratory, and that we had to rely on each other. Mm -hmm. Almost nobody's totally independent. Right. Uh, I like to get people who were collegial, yeah. but sometimes they weren't, and we, right. we were able to manage that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I liked people to be highly ethical. I, I, you know, I didn't want to have to worry about whether or not somebody was cutting corners because that never pays off in science. It just doesn't. And uh, I tried to figure out ways to test whether mm -hmm. or not those characteristics were ones that were the people had that I was recruiting. Sometimes I made mistakes. I didn't recruit the right people, and then I had to you know, ask people to leave, and that's very hard. Usually, I've discovered in my life that it's the personnel decisions mm -hmm. that are the hardest ones to deal with. And, uh, but you have to learn how to do that because you can't let your mistakes accumulate mm -hmm. because then you, the harm, then you harm the entire group. How can you tell when you interview someone if they're ethical? Mm. Undependably ethical. Well, it, you know, you can do that by uh, talking to people that they've worked with in the past. Mm -hmm. um, I'm surprised, you know, the degree to which I discover that people don't do thorough reference checking. It's very common, and, uh, and I always discovered that reference checking was extremely important. Um, and that if I had uh, people that uh, the candidate recommended that I could talk to, I've all, often asked uh, people, if I could talk to people that they didn't give me the Names. permission to do, yeah. if I could do that, I always ask before I did it. But you find a lot about people from talking to those that they've worked with in the past. And so I, as I said, I learned from mistakes that doing thorough reference checking. What are good questions to ask uh, a reference person? Mm. Well, uh, in what context they've worked with the person. Um, whether or not they felt that uh, the person carried through on whatever the duties were, um, whether or not they came to work on time. <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> right, right. You, you'd be amazed that some of these are quite basic questions. Um, you know, writing skill, math skills, depending on what the job was again. But, you know, and just in general, in, in talking to people and drawing them out, and sometimes you can learn from what people don't say as, what, as well as what they do say. So you have to listen with a very careful ear. For the pause. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Very, yes. 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 That's really unusual. So I've learned a lot in my life about these about these matters. It's really interesting. School doesn't really prepare you in a sense for, for life. A lot of life you have to learn on your own. I, I don't mean to say that no. as a university president, but as a human being. No, I think you are absolutely right. I mean there are many things that you learn through experience. Right. And I think oftentimes your failures mm -hmm. are yeah. as important for you as your successes. Because if you go through life only with success, you never, but I think that's impossible. But, you know, you learn, I learned often in my life from things that didn't work out, more than I learned from. When you had something that was 
a, a challenge or a mistake, what were the first things you told yourself? Well, or asked yourself? slow down. <laughs> try to analyze what went wrong. Stay calm. Mm -hmm. uh, try not to act too rashly. Um, try to put everything in perspective because sometimes a failure can seem catastrophic. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's the danger part, that you will do something that uh, perhaps isn't wise because you've not taken the time to distance yourself a little bit mm -hmm. from whatever the failure was. And then try to say, okay, well, what were the points that this didn't work? And what could I have done differently? Mm -hmm. Or what was going to happen inevitably and I couldn't change? I mean, there are things that you can change, there are things you can't change. And yes. I think understanding those is, it, it is appropriate. Do you ever, well you must, but really check with someone else on the, on the sort of get a, or in the past perhaps, get advice, and what role does that play in your thinking? I've been very fortunate in my life, uh, as I've progressed, that I had some wonderful mentors, right. both men and women, right. who were first and foremost honest with me about uh, things they thought I did well, and in areas that they thought I should be. So well, it's to your credit, sometimes it's hard to hear. It is hard to hear, that. that's <laughs> right. <laughs> but, but it's sometimes the best for you to hear. Yes. And, uh, and I feel blessed that I had, of course, your parents are your first teachers, and perhaps your most important teachers. But then, uh, subsequently, I've had people who were extremely important to me, and I always treasure them. Do you, do you put much stake or, or value and intuition in decision making? I put some, some. and uh, I, I think that, uh, you know, sometimes when you're making decisions about people, uh, intuition is often your best, mm -hmm. your best tool, though you can be fooled. Mm -hmm. I've learned that. <laughs> what did your parents try to teach you? Mm -hmm. Importance of education, mm -hmm. the importance of having a career, uh, working hard on that career, persisting even when it got very tough, uh, going to graduate school, you know, getting a PhD, all those were hard and difficult things to do. But they, I think their absolute belief in the importance of uh, persisting and uh, completing uh, your education, uh, pursuing those areas of life, for which you have a passion was mm -hmm. important. Uh, always reminding me and my two sisters about the importance of a family mm -hmm. and having that love of a family and companionship of a wonderful husband. Uh, so those were important lessons they taught me. Seeming unbalanced, both achievement and human. Yes, yeah, human. yes, yes. My father used to, I, I, I always remember that he used to say to me, now make sure you stop and smell the roses. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't rush through life. Mm -hmm. How does one make time for a husband in a job like yours, where you have to be so public well, so much know, of the time? I, 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 I think I always tell my colleagues, uh, choose your spouse well for this <laughs> role, role right. because it, being the spouse of a president, I think, is a very tough job. And uh, because your spouse is naturally in the limelight. And, uh, I have a wonderful husband who's been extremely supportive throughout my career and wanting to make sure that uh, w that we made joint decisions about what we did, w which mm -hmm. we've always done, but being willing, particularly in the last 10 years, to take a back seat mm -hmm. for his career so that mine could flourish. And uh, we have a wonderful time and it really enjoy, both enjoy this role of being at the University of Michigan a great deal. Do you carve out private time in the course of a week or a month, or what have what has worked for you? We do. Uh, some months are more difficult than yes. others, as you right. might imagine. Uh, some the university is cyclical in its busy times and in its oh. slower times. The summer is a little bit easier, even though we are still quite busy. Um, there's usually more time, and we take off a few weeks in August and. Uh, Go, we'll visit our new grandchild now. Oh, what do you do for friends? I was really impressed, if I remember correctly, mm -hmm. that uh, when you came here from the University of Iowa, of course you hit the ground running, mm -hmm. but some of your friends, if, if, if I remember correctly, came and unpacked you. Yes. And 
those are very good friends. Um, it seems like the same question about a husband. I mean, it takes a long time to develop friendships and, and you have to spend time with them. What, how did you fit that all in at Iowa? Well, um, it was uh, very fortunate at Iowa. There were several people that uh, were related in some part to the administration <coughs> that we became very close to, my husband and I, and have maintained those friendships over time and just found times to travel together and do things together. And it's the same with the previous places that I've been. We've always seemed to be able to meet people that we took time to get to know and enjoy. And we've tried to maintain those relationships because friends are everything. Yes, they, they are. Know, right. uh, through thick and thin. And uh, it's important to have people that you can talk to that are not directly related to your current position. Uh, right. And so you don't have to worry about the issues yeah. that might you know, normally arise. And uh, we've been blessed. You have been blessed, mm -hmm. very blessed. How much do you sleep at night? Oh. <laughs> I get normal amounts of sleep. Yeah. Uh, oh yes, seven or eight hours. And you keep your energy up high. I do. Uh, I, I, I love what I do. I think that in any career, it's extremely important to like it, yes. to like the people, to enjoy the work. I love that part of it. I love coming to Midland and meeting people, right. talking to graduates of the university and finding out about their lives and how they felt like the university had an impact on their lives. For me, those sorts of interactions and stories are extremely energizing. That is, I always come away from these events more convinced than ever about the importance of the University of Michigan in helping to shape lives and so that makes my work extremely important and relevant. And I don't think that if you don't, if you don't enjoy that, these jobs would be terrible. Yes. Because it's a hard job. It is a hard job. You know, you deal with multi-units in the, in the university, and of course every corporation has a chief and this and that and mm -hmm. that and this. But I always thought the personality came from the top. The personality, mm -hmm. uh, uh, just you are a leader of what? Mm -hmm. And so what is the personality you'd like to to have people pick up on it? What aspects of personality mm, or I character? Curious, enthusiastic, um, optimistic, always. Uh, I think it's very important for leaders to be optimistic, even in tough times, uh, because there's a silver lining for everything. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you have to look for it <laughs> to mm -hmm. find it. But you know, the university has so many positive things about it, and uh, particularly when I go out around the country and right. people talk to me about their admiration for the University of Michigan over decades and what it has accomplished. Uh, it makes me proud and uh, makes me ever more convinced about the importance of the work that I'm doing and that many other people are doing around me. You know, you've talked about the upside of dealing <laughs> with <laughs> wonderful people, but, and you've mentioned that a few mistakes in the past, oh, yes. right? <laughs> like all the <laughs> many. Many mistakes. Uh, what is the best way that you have learned or best ways to deal with uh, people who um, perhaps don't see it your way, or are obstructionist, or don't like change, um, or are just stubborn. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, it depends on the context. Uh, sometimes I talk to alums who are not happy about what the university is doing, and uh, you know, I'm always willing to engage. I'm always willing to talk to people about their concerns. Uh, sometimes, though, if we come to an impact. I just have to say, you know, I, I understand that you feel very passionately about what you believe. I don't happen to agree with you. We just have to agree to disagree. And I always try to be polite, always try to, to be cognizant of the fact that we may not share a common view, but never, I, I am never unwilling to engage. I, I, I will engage with people and talk to them. Uh, within the university, that is, if I'm trying to get people to accept a new idea or to change. Sometimes it's, uh, it's very good to listen to what people have to say, mm -hmm. and I try not to, uh, to inhibit a uh, conversation. But at some point, if you can't reach a consensus and you have right. to move forward, the leader has to make a decision. Right. And so you have to say, you know, I've listened, I've heard your concerns, but we are doing X, we're moving forward. So I think there's a fine line that you you try to, to calibrate that and find out where it is. 
mm -hmm. uh, not to cut off debate too prematurely, mm -hmm. but again, not to debate issues forever because then you don't move forward. Right. You know, everyone says change is the, <laughs> the word of the day, mm -hmm. so to speak, and sometimes you just have to make an executive decision, I think, in, in I, our areas. I believe you're right. Yes, just move mm -hmm. right forward. Right. Um, I told you before the program that my initial idea for the program was really a three-minute uh, thing on the <laughs> philosophy of life. And if I were going to interview you for a three-minute, <laughs> or even a half a second, <laughs> what, would, what would you, I mean, on reflection, what would you like to say about your philosophy, or like words to live by, or what you've learned? Um, stay optimistic. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, find the good in every situation that you can. Understand that you will fail. There is no guarantee that you will not, but that you can recover and you can learn from failure. And the most important thing in life is to show up for work every day. <laughs> On time. On time. <laughs> right. I believe it absolutely. <laughs> um, uh, there was a scientist, you probably know the name of, perhaps not, named George Pimentel. Mm -hmm. And George, um, George unfortunately got cancer and died. But I think he said at one point, he said, I wanted to be known that I always showed up on the, like, like the ball field, ready to play. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and, uh, what a great attitude yes. to, for people to have, for yes. anybody to have, mm -hmm. uh, because it was so endearing and so necessary mm -hmm. and so team-oriented mm -hmm. to do your part. Mm -hmm. It's necessary to do your part. I agree. Now, you have children, do you? We, we have, have, have a grandchild. Right. We have one son, and he is married. And, uh, my husband and I were presented with a grandchild about three weeks ago. So we are extraordinarily excited about this granddaughter. She is just precious. How does that change your, your, your um, I want to say, impression of the world now that you're a grandmother? Well, I'm getting used to it. Yeah. Um, I find myself being very much more interested in traveling to Denver to see this <laughs> grandchild than I used to be. <laughs> yeah. no, I really yeah. love to visit our son and daughter-in-law. but. Uh, I know that she's changing very rapidly now, and I want to make sure that I don't miss that. And so we we go out uh, as often as we can just to uh, spend a day with her and uh, and enjoy this marvelous and precious new life. Thank you. We want to thank Mary Sue for being with us today. We learned a great, great deal from her. Um, for one, it's good to have good parents <laughs> who emphasize education, but even if you didn't have it, remember, emphasize education in your life and see it through. We also learned that life um, is a little bit perhaps luckier for you if you know early on what you want to do and you live in an environment that supports it. She talked about coming of age in the Sputnik era. era. Um, it we also learned from her that um, Every job can, can teach you something. She talked about running her lab and the things that she needed to learn. Uh, they would have to do with grant writing. They had to do with writing. They had to do with personnel issues. They had to do with um, um, mistakes in all those areas. Um, she talked a lot about finding uh, the silver lining in, in your mistakes. She also talked about personnel being such an important part of any job and the need to generously and deeply check references and listen for the words said and the words not said in order to um, really obtain as best you can an accurate view. She also talked about asking permission to uh, interview people, perhaps not on the list as an approved person. Um, she took a risk by taking a, another job in administration and it opened a whole new world for her. But she built on the skills she had developed in the lab. She found satisfaction in that because she felt she could help people more broadly that way. As a result of that, I think she herself, uh, I'm putting words in your mouth here, but she, I think, views herself more differently now, perhaps as a leader, where well, you are, but as a leader of more, the potential of being a leader of more, and therefore helping more people and, and having a wider, uh, not only exposure, but a sense of, uh, what can be done. Um, we talked a little bit about uh, energy. We talked about having good people in your life, like an understanding husband. She has an amazing husband um, that would support her, her career um, opportunities. She talked about the luck of having friends in the, some of the colleagues she worked in with in various places that supported her then and thereafter. Uh, she made time for family life. Um, 
I was very interested in the part of how you deal with people who disagree with you. Uh, she talked about the necessity of really listening, something we I try to do in this program, and uh, trying to see their point of view. And finally, if you cannot find agreement, but to just say, well, we have to agree that we see it differently. Uh, <clears throat> if you don't, if they don't work for you or in the organization, but in the organization, then at some point you have to make. Um, the decision. She talked about ethics. She talked about confidence. She talked about optimism. She talked about showing up for work, which is also <laughs> very useful. Tells me about our times when you have to say that. Um, but uh, I want to remind you that what what she is really talking about is to do your very best to see it through and know that in every life there are setbacks, so you too can see it through. And I wish you would take that with you in your life. I would also like to encourage you to, to um, take what Mary Sue has and that, that sort of cheerfulness, <laughs> that warmth that you know that comes through. So thank you Mary Sue for being with us today and remember kindness counts. I was thinking the other day how could I just find kindness and so this is what I say about kindness. Kindness is the best of yourself shared. Go out and do something for someone you know today and someone you don't know. We'll see you next time. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you, Mary Thank Sue. You. That's wonderful. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> well, welcome back to our